Hi, I'm Karen St. Hilaire. I'm a life coach and the author of The Divine Butterfly. I wrote this book because I wanted individuals to totally get into meditating and understanding that they have a purpose in this world. I live in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm an only child. I live with my mom, and really I'm a mommy's girl. I have no children, um, but I really wanted to work with individuals to, you know, understand who they are as, um, as conduits in this world. And I think that my choice to just be a solo bird speaks to that. Uh, I am the first vice president in my sorority. I work in a lot of nonprofits, especially those that are focused and geared on working with um, healthy families, families, and especially young girls, teaching young girls how to be great women. Um, not an African American woman, not a Chinese woman, but just a woman. And then they can add any other adjectives going forward. Um, I'm not really into sports, but I'm a huge Jets fan. So what makes me tick? Um, the little things in life. So I read a lot and I don't read just like novels and stories. I read books that speak about meditation. I am big into religion. Um, not, I don't have one chosen faith that I, you know, dance with. I learn about different religions in different groups because it teaches me how to deal with different individuals. So meditative wise, I'll do Kundalini yoga. Why? Because I don't really like to work out, but yoga works. And Kundalini allows me to not only learn about the Sikh religion, it taught me how to do like very aggressive yoga and taught me the art of meditation in the process. So these are things that I like to do. Um, I'm not a movie person, so just spending time like two and a half hours or three hours in a movie theater it does not necessarily work for me. But if I am to sit and learn about how to be a better person, so if it's a show that's talking about, you know, thinking differently and working differently and loving differently, I watch it because it makes me a better person and I'm able to pour that out going forward. Um, in Brooklyn, I am known as the mayor gosh and it's funny because I grew up in the same area where I live now and so anyone who needs something or who needs to tap into another individual they'll reach out to me and say hey Karen knows that person and just for that alone I know there's a consistency that I have it's all about being consistent it's a consistency that I have that works for people and they're able to trust me and my word and that's really important to me I have a very close relationship with my mom my mom had me when she was 20 and you know we just grew up together, so to speak, huh? and she wanted the best for me. So every organization that worked with working with young girls or teaching us to be mature, helping us um, spread our wings, my mom had me join that organization or become part of a group that would allow me to be a better Karen. And I think that's why I'm the way I am now. To this day, now our roles have turned because I'm like, okay, you need to join this group, mom, because it's going to help you be a better you at this age. And um, in the book writing process, I didn't tell her about it, but towards the end, I, she found out the last week that I was writing this book. And she, I didn't even know it, but she was my biggest supporter and promoter. I think my mother called everyone in her Rolodex, everyone in the iPhone that she really doesn't use. My mom went to everyone in her church, all her clubs and groups and was like, Karen wrote a book and you have to buy the book. So when the book came, I ordered her book and my dad's book. I actually went on Amazon and bought their books because I wanted the first two sales to be my parents. My mom called everyone and said, oh my God, I have the biggest shout out in the book. I'm in the book. So I have to say that that was one of the happiest days of my life because you know, we graduate from college, they're happy. You know, we, we get married and have children, they're happy. But I wrote a book and she sees her name in the book and she's just like elated that that was pure joy for me. My, my future entails being a New York Times bestselling author. I know I can do it with this book, but it's really about the next book. The next book I'll be focusing on individuals and their failures and letting them know and giving them tips about how you can take those very down moments and make it part of your success. You know, letting people know in this climate that you don't have to be on top of the world to be successful. You can take all of the down times, all of the speed bumps, all of the scrapes and the bruises and create greatness. So I know that I will be a best-selling author and I'm trying to do it in 2019. I have a big goal. There's a show called The Wire 
that used to be on HBO, which is one of my favorite shows. So now that I've said that to you, you can tell what my personality really is. Upon graduating from grad school, I wanted to work in the town of Sandtown, Winchester, Baltimore, Maryland. Why? Because The Wire was filmed in Sandtown, Winchester. There, in that space, I met individuals who were going through the butterfly process. I wasn't sure what it was at the time. I didn't know it was a butterfly process, but I saw individuals who were broken. I saw individuals who were trying to just get out of a rut because I was working at a nonprofit where they gave them aid for being single parents and or drug addicts and or um, you know disjointed households. I saw people who were at the lowest point of their lives try to attend a session on a Thursday night to A, get some money in order for them to feed their kids or get some resources and access that would take them out of the rut that they were in. Once I processed it for myself, I equated it to the butterfly effect, to the butterfly process. You know, when you walk in, you're in a cocoon stage. The pooper stage was A, attending this 13 week programs that they had available to you and learning humility, learning, um, empathy, learning everything about yourself in order to be able to say, I'm going to be a better person. And so when the program ended and I was getting ready to write all of my evaluations, I saw some people who were helped 100%, some people who had 50 and some people that didn't help at all because they went right back into the system. And so I understood at that moment at the age of 33, that individuals go through a butterfly effect. We just go through it in different stages of our life, in different phases. And guess what? It's not necessarily a low income, a middle income, or an upper income. It is global. It is, every, everyone goes through this. And so I just labeled it the butterfly effect. And once we understand that the cocoon stage is not the end, the pooper stage is not the end, you evolved into something beautiful and something great, but you have to go through the process that will allow individuals to be as successful as they will ever be. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and look for us everywhere by searching Join the Tea.